Hey guys, I'm Trina and today is another Tuesday Talks. Tuesday Talks was created by Janie and Janelle and it is a Goodreads group that gives us a topic to discuss every week. It's open to anyone to join so that link is down below in case you want to check it out and join in next week. This week's topic is what are your bookish pet peeves and this is going to get real interesting. Plot wise, some things I really hate are when the entire plot of a book could have been avoided or solved with just one conversation at the very beginning of the book. The entire plot is based around this thing that your main character doesn't know, but everybody else in the whole story knows, and if someone had just told them, the whole book would have basically had no purpose. A really great example of this one, in my opinion, just a personal opinion, keep in mind, was the book I Was Here by Gail Foreman. In that book, our main character's best friend had killed herself, and our main character is trying to figure out why it happened. And the entire book, the friend's parents knew why she did it. The friend's roommates knew why she did it. The best friend main character should have figured out why she did it if they were really great friends. Like, it was the most pointless mystery to me. So I did not enjoy the mystery aspect of that book. Um, I really felt like the whole thing could have been avoided, so that made me enjoy it a little bit less. I was kind of like, really? I also hate it when cheating is a plot device. The only way the two main love interests could get together is if one of them cheats on their other significant other. Mm, cheating happens and people react to it in very personal, very different ways. But I hate it specifically in YA books because books can be very influential, especially to young readers. I just really hate it when an author chooses to portray cheating among the main characters as right, as okay, as good and forming a good relationship. If it's at least talked about, now that, that would be great. That would be a great plot point for the characters to kind of hash out and bring up why it may or may not have been the right thing. But when it's just like, oh, I have a boyfriend and instead of picking up the phone and calling him, I'm going to sleep with this other guy that I'm having chemistry with right now. Why? Why did you make that decision? I don't understand it. I know text messages and calls are not the best way to break up with someone in real life, but that's better than just sleeping with somebody else or kissing somebody else or falling in love with somebody else. I cannot stand when this happens, especially in YA books, and it's just brushed over and never discussed again. Can't. I also really dislike controlling love interest. This seems to be a current trend where the main female character has some male love interest that is pretty controlling and pretty jealous and a bad guy, tough guy personality. I know a lot of people are really into that, but personally I'm not. I've been in controlling relationships before, so I hate reading about them in books because I don't think that they're handled well. Again, I think it's something that is kind of glorified and I'm not down with that. I also don't like the idea that pops up a lot in YA that first love is true love or last love or only love, that the main character has never even been anywhere in the same room with a boy before and the first boy that ever pays them any attention, they fall in love with, they go out, and that's who they end up with for the rest of their life. Nine times out of ten in real life, that doesn't happen. Usually you don't end up with the very first person you ever dated or kissed. If you do, you are extremely lucky and it definitely does happen. But I don't like that being the common theme, especially in YA, where young kids are reading this and maybe setting some relationship standards based on what they're reading. I do really like it when books bring in a second relationship because I enjoy kind of seeing a character dealing with hashing out feelings from heartbreak, breakups, and then learning to love again. I am just more interested in that kind of a story. I don't know. That's just me. As far as non-plot things, just book things in general, I don't like novellas. I'm not a fan of them. I think that they usually just don't add anything to the series at all. I don't know why 
there are so many of them these days. And there are some series where the novellas work very well. For instance, the Shatter Me series with Tao Mafi. Those novellas give you really great insight into characters whose points of view that we aren't normally in, and they were needed for the plot. But even when they're needed, I just usually don't enjoy the plot of that novella. I don't know, I usually just don't like them, but I keep reading them, and I wish that I could just kind of break it off with novellas. <laughs> it's a huge pet peeve of mine when I'm reading a book and at the start of every chapter there is some quote that's not even from this book. Like, I don't want to read this quote from some other book. I want to read the book I'm reading. Half the time you don't even know how it applies because it comes at the beginning of the chapter and you haven't read the chapter yet to know what the connection is. The only time I'm okay with little quotes or excerpts at the beginning of a chapter is if those excerpts are from a fictional work within that world, such as in the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver. I think at least the first book had quotes that were from the Book of Deliria, which was something that existed in that world. So that was kind of cool because you got some backstory about the world and what their value system was. Is. So I don't really mind that, but when it's just a quote from some totally other book, usually I just find that annoying and wish that I could get on with the actual thing I'm trying to read at the moment. Thank you very much. I think we all know this one by now. I don't like cover changes. I don't like it when a series is halfway through the series and the cover design completely changes. I understand why it happens, but it still is a pet peeve and I wish that publishers would republish whichever books that were the old design into the new matching design so that collectors could have a matching set. And my last bookish pet peeve is when the blurb on the book or when reviews of a book compare everything to some other big known book like The Hunger Games. This is the next Hunger Games. This is the next Game of Thrones. I understand when reviewers say if you liked Game of Thrones you might also like this book, but comparing them and saying this is the new Game of Thrones, I think that just sets up totally false expectations and I don't like that at all need to quit. So that's all of the pet peeves that I've come up with for this week's topic. Let me know some of your bookish pet peeves down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!